It's also been voted by some of London's leading architects as the ugliest building on the banks of the River Thames. Now, looking at the building, I don't suppose you could really disagree. But the old saying, don't judge a book by its cover, definitely applies to this building because the theatres inside are without doubt some of the best in the country. Now next on the right, behind the trees here, we can, we can just about make out a low-lying glass-fronted building. And behind that, there's a tall office block. Now these two buildings go together to make Kent House. And this is the headquarters for ITV Television. And it's from this building that we get many of our TV shows. Such classics as Richard and Judy. This Morning. Pop Idol. X Factor and all the other rubbish it comes out of it. Now it's also from this building on the right when they have news reports at various times during the day that they actually use this shot of the River Thames we're now travelling through as their background. Now anybody who lives here in London would have no doubt seen this on telly. Anybody who doesn't live in London right now we could all be on national TV. So that's it, don't be shy, give them a little wave over there on your right. Hello mum. Especially if you're travelling with your loved one, you may get to see yourselves on telly. If you're travelling with somebody else's loved one, I suggest you quickly look to the left. People have been caught out. Now next on the right we see the Oxo Tower, this red brick building. And officially it's called Stamford Wharf. And many years ago, this was a cold storage warehouse. But today, like many disused warehouses along the banks of the river, it's been converted into luxury apartments. Each apartment sells for about two million pounds. Now, right at the top of the building, underneath the glass canopy, is the Harvey Nichols restaurant. And it's a luxury restaurant, and it's also a pretty expensive restaurant. Apparently, it costs Fifteen pounds for a bottle of water up there, so God knows what a meal for two would cost. I do suppose you get a nice view of the river whilst you're eating your meal, and it has been voted one of the top ten restaurants here in London. Now we go to our left-hand side, folks, and there's a, a red brick building, Gothic style, and it kind of looks like a church. Now this is called Zion College and Library. And this building houses many rare and priceless books, including Queen Victoria's personal diary and Bible, and the very first Bible translated into English. Right next door, there's a, a building with a green sloping roof. And this is the old City of London School, where many famous dignitaries were taught here in London, including Sir Winston Churchill. He attended the school until the age of 15, before he moved on to Harrow. Take a quick look in between the arched windows of that building and you see four statues. From left to right, Milton, Shakespeare, Bacon and Sir Isaac Newton, four of this country's famous scholars. Right, we're now going to pass through the Blackfriars group of bridges and the first one is a road bridge. In between the two bridges, by the side of the boat, you'll see red supports, red pillars, and this is all that remains of the very first railway bridge that spanned the River Thames. Now the top half was removed, it became unsafe, but they could not remove the supports for fear of undermining the foundations of the bridges by the side. The last bridge we're now passing beneath is the Blackfriars Railway Bridge. And it's actually closed at the moment, as you can see, and as you can hear, there's lots of work taking place on the bridge. Now, folks, so this is roughly the halfway point uh, down to the tower. How are we all doing? Are we enjoying it so far? Yes? Excellent, okay. Now, just ahead of us here on the right, a building with a very tall chimney. And this is the old Bankside Power Station. It's not a power station today. Today, it's the Tate Modern art gallery and it's actually free to enter the Tate Modern. Not too many places here in London are free of charge. Now I actually visited the building just last week and uh, it turned out to be a traumatic experience for me. 
About an hour after leaving the building, I realised I'd lost my wallet. So, retracing my steps back to the Tate Modern, I was amazed to find my wallet in the building, sitting on the floor. And there was 20 people standing around it, all taking photographs of it. <laughs> the Tate Modern. Go to your left hand side, ladies and gentlemen, and dominating the skyline, the massive dome and the cross of St Paul's Cathedral, considered by most a Sir Christopher Wren's masterpiece. Now, it took Wren about 35 years to build St Paul's. It was completed in the year 1710. It stands 365 feet high, and it has the second largest unsupported cathedral dome anywhere in Europe. The largest sits on St. Peter's in the Vatican City of Rome. Many of our national heroes are buried inside St. Paul's in its famous crypt. And these include the Iron Duke, the Duke of Wellington, Admiral Lord Nelson, and of course, the architect himself, Sir Christopher Wren. Now take a look here to the right hand side, folks. And behind the trees, we have a replica of William Shakespeare's Globe Theatre. The white circular structure with a thatched roof is an exact replica of Shakespeare's Globe, built in exactly the same way the original would have been built. Now this was the brainchild of a man called Sam Wanamaker, and he was a film and theatre director who sadly died before its completion. The project was taken on by his daughter Zoe, and it was opened by herself and the Queen about 14 years ago now. It's well worth a visit, they're always reenacting Shakespeare's plays inside the building, and plays are performed in the traditional way. There's no microphones or stage lighting, it's all done as it would have been done back in Shakespeare's day. Ahead of us, we have the Southwark Road Bridge. This was opened in 1921, and it was built to relieve the congestion from the old London Bridge. Now, as we get down through the bridge, ahead of us on the right-hand side, we have a famous Riverside Tavern. It's the Anchor at Bank Site, and there's been an Anchor pub on or near this site for 400 years. The original was frequented by Dr. Johnson, Samuel Pepys, Charles Dickens, and William Shakespeare. The pub is actually mentioned in the diaries of uh, Dr. Johnson and Samuel Pepys. Now, we highly recommend the Anchor, folks. It's a lovely pub to visit. It's actually starred in a few films, most notably at the end of Mission Impossible. Tom Cruise and Ving Rhames are set outside the pub here, having a pint of beer, celebrating their successful mission. This is the Cannon Street Railway Bridge, folks. As we pass through the bridge, just look to the supports and you get a rough indication of how fast the Thames is flowing. You see it swirling around the supports there. It does actually flow up to about six knots, which uh, it makes it a very fast flowing river. And it's quite a high tide today. Uh, in five hours, the tide will rise seven metres. So there's going to be a rise of seven metres uh, of water here on the Thames today. Now, just ahead of us on the right-hand side, we have a pirate ship. And this is a replica of Sir Francis Drake's vessel, the Golden Hind, the ship in which he sailed around the world. He was the first Englishman to do so. It took him nearly four years. He had a crew of 80 cutthroat sailors. The replica on our right is a full working ship. It has retraced Drake's voyage twice, and it's set to do so a third time. Keep looking to your right, behind the trees is Southwark Cathedral, a place of worship in London for over a thousand years. Baptised in Southwark Cathedral a long time ago was a young boy called John Harvard. He was the son of a local trader. John Harvard grew up, he emigrated to America where he helped found the Harvard University of Massachusetts. London Bridge, the world famous London Bridge, the most historic bridge that stands across the Thames. There's been a London Bridge on this site for 2,000 years, dating back to the Romans. Now the London Bridge, which stood before this one, was sinking into the mud. It was going to be demolished, 
until an American oil tycoon bought the bridge for two million dollars. He had it taken down stone by stone. He shipped it out to America, where it was re-erected over Lake Havasu in the Arizona desert as a tourist attraction. This present London Bridge opened in 1973. Now, as we get through the bridge, folks, looking up to the right on the skyline here, we see a building under construction. And when it's completed next year, this will be the tallest building in Europe, standing at just over a thousand feet high. The Shard of Glass, as it will be called. Now, the tallest building in the UK at present is the Canada Tower at Canary Wharf, which stands at 770 feet. So the Shard will be almost 300 foot taller than the Canada Tower. To our left hand side folks, we have a yellow bricked building. This is the old Billingsgate Fish Market. A very famous fish market which stood on this site for nearly a thousand years. It's not there anymore, the market. It's now moved further down river to a larger site on the Docklands of London. The only fish that remain on the left are the golden ones up on the roof, acting as weather vents. And sitting in the water, just ahead of us here on the right hand side folks, we have London's very own warship, HMS Belfast, a Southampton class cruiser built in the Harland and Wolf shipyard in Belfast in 1938. Incidentally, that's also where the ill-fated Titanic was constructed. Commissioned in 1939, she last fired her guns in anger during the Korean campaign. She's been permanently moored here since the 1970s, an extension to the Imperial War Museum. You can go aboard the Belfast and look around her nine different decks from the engine rooms right up to the bridge. An interesting day out, kids under 16 years of age go free on the Belfast. Now, what we're going to do for you very shortly, folks, okay? I can see quite a few people trying to get a, a picture of Tower Bridge. What we'll do very shortly, we'll turn the boat side on, okay? And you'll get the perfect photo opportunity. So just wait a few moments, okay? Now, if you are taking pictures, that is fine to stand up. But once you've taken your pictures, please sit down again because there are people sitting behind you, okay, trying to see. Now, just look here to the right-hand side, folks. We have one of London's newest buildings. The funny shaped glass building is called City Hall and it's the headquarters for the Mayor of London. How original, City Hall. Uh, the building was designed by Norman Foster, the famous architect. He also designed the building back on our left, the funny rocket shaped building, nicknamed the Gherkin. And this is because on opening night, the building was illuminated with bright green lights and it looked like a giant Gherkin. We have had many suggestions on what the building looks like, but uh, I think we'll stick with a gherkin. It's still only early. Now, before we turn the boat, folks, look over to your left, and you've got a great view of London's most famous tourist attraction, the Tower of London. Now, this was all started by William the Conqueror back in 1078, shortly after the Norman invasion. In its long history, the tower has been used as many things, including a royal mint, a zoo, an observatory, a fortress. It's probably best remembered as a prison and as a place of execution. Now, just look to the river's wall on our left. Once this boat passes, look to the river's wall on our left and you'll see a bricked up archway with a sentence above that reads entry to the traitor's gate. Now, years ago, traitors to the Crown, if found guilty, were sentenced up at the Houses of Parliament. They were then placed in a rowing boat and rowed down to this point, taken through the archway up onto Tower Hill to await execution, usually by means of the chopping block, a large blunt axe. A few famous people to go through Traitor's Gate and never return were Anne Boleyn, one of Henry VIII's wives, Sir Thomas More, 
and Guy Fawkes. It now houses the crown jewels which are guarded by the famous beef eaters. There's nearly a thousand years of French and English history inside the tower and most of it ladies and gentlemen is pretty gruesome.